Hello and welcome to this special interview here in the courtroom. Joining me today is India's additional Solicitor General Mohan Parasaran and one of India's finest lawyers who has fought many a battle. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Parasaran, Thank for you. agreeing to speak to us. Sir, I want to first understand from you the kind of litigation or the kind of explosion of litigation, if I may call it, that we've witnessed over the last very few years. Would you define this as an explosion? See, the complete face of litigation has changed over the last one decade or so. And it is no longer the conventional law or personal laws which actually land up in the courts. Now actually we are looking into new challenges which are arising as a consequence of actually globalization. And uh, what I feel is the emerging areas are competition law and uh, coming to even tax matters international taxation, transfer pricing, then intellectual property, WTO. These are all, I think, uh, pose a lot of challenges. These, issues, these areas pose a lot of challenges and they are quite new to many conventional lawyers who have been practicing. For instance, competition law, the competition commission has become proactive. Now the com there are so many proactive cases. Proactive is an understatement. <laughs> Corporate India as would a, tell as you. As a law officer, you always understate. <laughs> no? As a private lawyer, you can try to be aggressive. <laughs> but uh, they have been very, very, I think, uh, proactive, I, I should say. And many cases have also landed up before the competition appellate tribunal. Mm. Uh, there has been a phenomenal rise in cases, which involves not only private players, but also the PSUs and the government. How, how do you see it evolving, sir? See, it has to evolve uh, considering the Indian perspective. But uh, going by that, we can't also ignore the international jurisprudence, which will be very relevant insofar as competition law is concerned. Therefore, there has been a lot of precedents in the European countries, in the US, which are all being looked into by the Competition Commission. And, uh, of course, they had to mould uh, those principles to the Indian situation in a pragmatic manner. Mm. And uh, I feel, I think it has to be a judicial mix. No? There was a lot of criticism in some quarters that even the competition commission should be headed by a retired judge. Mm. Now it is actually by a retired IAS officer or a retired bureaucrat of repute. And... Uh, the appellate tribunal in some cases feel that possibly the approach of a court of law might have been different than that of the competition commission. And it's all actually trial and error. It, it of course, even though the chairman is a bureaucrat, it has a retired judge as well. Yes. And you can't say the chairman is also, I think, completely oblivious of uh, the legal provisions. And uh, any inquiry has to be preceded by a report to the Director General of Investigation. And uh, so far, I think uh, the Competition Commission has been doing a very commendable job and has created a lot of awareness. What is your view in terms of the fact that, on the one hand, the world looks at India and gives us this democratic dividend, so to speak, as a country, where the rule of law prevails, there's an effective uh, and a fair Independent judiciary. Independent judiciary. But on the other hand, you have mounting backlog of very critical corporate cases, tax cases, in across any of the forums that you look at. That is because of the volume of litigation and also the fact that, uh, see, there are frivolous litigations which are actually taken both by private parties and the government. Take, for instance, the tax litigation. I think in a matter where, which involves a lot of stakes, the department on the file puts a note that it's a fit case for filing an SLP, in spite of noticing a binding judgment of the Supreme Court. I notice the binding judgment of the Supreme Court and say that, unmindful of the stakes, we have to go by the law declared by the Supreme Court. The issue in the desired case was this. The issue in the present case is this. And it was answered like that in the previous case. The same would be the answer by the Supreme Court. And that too, that was by a three-judge bench. 
but still I got the file back. You say you reconsider our opinion because the stakes are quite high. So the problem is I think as far as government is concerned, in view of various other developments, no bureaucrat wants to take the responsibility. Why should you actually commit yourselves on the file? Tomorrow, I think after your retirement, somebody will try to chase you. And that is why I think that is a cause, no? And uh, do you believe there is a fear psychosis today in this country? Definitely. Actually, the lot of fear psychosis amongst the bureaucrats, particularly because of the scams. I do welcome the RTI. But see, the RTI is also being flagrantly misused. That has been the concern of the PMO as well. See, this has actually affected the functioning of the government. Nobody wants to actually put his heart in his note. Could it be because the heart is not clean? No, the heart could have been clean, but they'll say, why take a chance? My heart is clean, as I said in a particular matter. If you feel that the matter is already covered, stakes involved are quite high, then why should I take a chance? Stakes involved are high, therefore fit case for SLP. There, I think, you so can't say the hearts are unclean. There is a fear unclean. psychosis in the bureaucracy, which is executive. There is a fear psychosis within corporate India as well. Corporate India also fear psychosis. I think they have been quite sensitive to judicial interventions. And there is a feeling in the corporate circles, rightly so, that the present day governments are virtually non-functional as a consequence of which the burden has fallen on the shoulders of the judiciary to decide sometimes even policy issues. And uh, effectively, I think whatever you see today, it does not happen in any other democratic country. Today, the Indian Supreme Court is the most powerful institution. Even one judge can change the fate of the country. And if you take any other country, even the US, that's not the case. Therefore, I think even the corporate India has a lot of fear psychosis. Particularly, they are afraid about what way the judiciary would go. And apart from the fact that, you can't deny the fact that uh, there is a, a sort of a corruption in the system. And uh, sometimes actually, even good elements are painted in a black brush, even though I think your intent may not be to commit a crime. For instance, even the 2G matter, there might be actually persons who are, who are bona fide. They are also, everybody have been joined together. Mm. So that is why actually there's a sort of a fear causes even in the corporate sector, mainly because garments of the day are not very strong.